Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 139, List of Employees by Department. All right, today's question uh, came in from Tom in the UK. Tom describes he has department name in column A, employee name in column B, and then the department names running across the top here. It was looking for a VLOOKUP or something that would give him the list of employees. All right, well, I know that I could get out Mike's book and figure out how to do this, but I'm going to go uh, just, uh, let me see if I can figure out a way to do this uh, low tech. Let's call it low tech. So equal, how many count if, count how many employees are in this department. So we take all of a column A, I'll press F4 because I'm going to copy that sideways, is equal to the A up there. And so we now know that how many employees are in each department. And then I need to know where does it start. So where does it start equal match of uh, this letter, column A, or letter A, department A, within column A. Again, I'll press F4 there, comma 0 because we want an exact match. That tells me that the first A is in row 2, the first B is in row 8, and the first C is in row 11. Now watch this, I'm going to do uh, just, I'm going to select a large range of cells, more than I would ever need, and say equal offset, offset starting from cell B1, F4 to lock that down, and how many rows down do I want to go? I want to go down two rows, oh that's one too many, uh, but we'll, um, let me lock that to the row, minus one, comma, how many columns over, zero columns over, how tall do I want it to be? Oh, that's the uh, how many that we had there, so E2, comma, one, all right, so offset in this case is going to return several different answers, and because I selected a large range of cells, all I have to do is press Control shift enter and those answers are all going to appear in the right spot like this. Bam! Isn't that cool? Copy, paste, paste, and I now have a list of the employees. If I could just get them to ignore the NAs. And of course, since we're going to print this, I don't know if Tom's going to print it or not, but let's assume he's going to print it. He could just come back here and say cell errors as blank, and now it's going to print perfectly, right? And we're good to go. But I know, of course, Tom's going to want to not have those NAs show up. So I said, all right, let's do a little if error here. And of course, uh, even though it was a valiant try, control shift enter, it doesn't work because the whole thing isn't an error or if error can't deal with an array or I don't know why, it's just not working. So Mike, I know, I know that you will have an amazing solution to this. Let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, offset and page set up, don't show the error, I love it. And what's so cool about this is that's a little teeny formula compared to the array formula you'd have to do. Now, actually, Mr. Excel was right in chapter 15 of my Control Shift Enter. It's, that chapter is called Extracting Data with Criteria. And uh, I did a count if, and this is straight from the book. There's a big array formula with aggregate. Uh, but let's do something slightly different here. How about adding an extra column and then doing a straight VLOOKUP? Now, here's the extra column. Since this is the classic multiple values in the first column of lookup, and we need to return multiple items problem, right? So how in the world do we deal with that? Well, since that's a duplicate, if we just create a key over here that's not a duplicate, we can use that. And here's how we will do it. We'll say, hey, get that A, and we need to join it with the ampersand. Shift 7, and we're going to use the count if. Now, the trick here is we're going to do an expandable range. And right now, whoops, right now that would not work, but B3, you lock the first cell reference. I'm going to lock just the row reference. That's an expandable range. The 3 is locked here, but not here. So as we copy down, Control Enter, count if only counts 1A here, but the expandable range, you could see it's expanded. The 3 is locked, the 4 is not. So now it's looking at both A's. When it gets down here, you can see there's a 3 and an 8. It's counting uh, 6 letter A. So that's our new unique count or unique criteria column. Or let's set a different way. It's a unique identifier that helps us with our VLOOKUP. Now, the only trick when we get over to VLOOKUP 
is the lookup value. But no problem. We're going to take this A. And remember, as we copy it down, we need it locked. But when we go to the side, we need the A to move to B. We need A1, A2, A3. So we're going to join it with a number formula incrementer, rows. And we're going to use an expandable range like we just did over in COUNTIF. F dollar sign, whoops, F dollar sign, and I'm sitting in 7, colon F7. That will expand as we go down. Rows says how many rows are there? 7 to 7, that's 1. That'll turn to 8, then 9. So that'll give us 1, 2, 3 as we copy down. Comma. Now the table, we just include this first column. F4, comma, the column is number 3, so a 3. And we're going to do exact match. Now, this will give us an error just like over in Mr. Excel, because when we copy down, the VLOOKUP is saying, hey, I can't find the seventh and eighth value, but no problem. Now, we don't want to use if error. And I talked about this in my book and other videos. Anytime you can figure out a logical test that does not involve the actual function, then you should use that with the if and run a null text string instead of having to run the formula multiple times. So I'm going to choose to do if row, whoops, I'm such a bad typer. I'm just going to copy this. I should have copied this from before. So the logical test will be, hey, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When you are greater than this count right here, then we're past the row we want. We're past, in this case, a6, then just show for value of true, a null text string, double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for please show nothing. All right, otherwise run the formula. That way, when we're down here, it's not running VLOOKUP. It's just running a logical test and plopping a null text string in the, in the cell. Control Enter. Now here, it wouldn't matter at all. This is a teeny data set. But for big data sets, it does matter significantly, especially with array formulas. And it's a good habit to get in. No problem. In this case, small data set, if error would work. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, that was a great way to go. I love that uh, uh, concatenated VLOOKUP. Also, hey, I never thought about the point. I always thought that if error was a really fast way to go because we didn't have to do the VLOOKUP twice. Uh, your point about only not having to do the VLOOKUP at all uh, because of the logical test, that's a great tip. I love that one. All right, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.